Thank you for keeping us company. And if you just tuned in, this is Y254 Discussion Monday, where tonight we are focusing on the Office of the Inspector General of Police. And we remember just uh, last week we saw uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta appoint Hillary Mutiambai to the Office of uh, Inspector of General of Police. And now we want to see what will this man be doing once in office with me in studio is Anaklit Don and uh, Gonjiri Karyoki, both are political analysts. We will be having a quite a you know, some discussion tonight. And just to bring to your attention or to your knowledge, uh, the office of the IG is, is established under Article 254 of the Kenya's Constitution and Section 8 of the National Police Act Number no. 11 of 2011. And constitutionally, the IG holds the overall and independent command of the entire National Police Service. And now uh, my first question, gentlemen, is do you support the appointment of Hillary Mutiambai to the office of the IG? Karaoke. Uh, Hillary, thank you and uh, uh, good evening to the viewers. Of course, the appointment of... Uh, uh, let me begin by uh, first congratulating mm -hmm. uh, the former Inspector General, Jay Boynet. Mm -hmm. And the Inspector General has served his statutory roles and leadership roles mm -hmm. to the best of his ability. Right. And I think as a nation, we have been able to see changes in the wake of uh, what has been happening in the country. We have had so many terror uh, threats. Right. We have also had uh, the reforms in the National Police Service. Mm -hmm. Which we'll be looking at, actually. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then, let me anchor also the, in, uh, the, 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 the unveiling of Mr. Hillary Mutiabai as of advantage to Kenyans because he brings a lot of expertise in uh, areas of anti-terrorism as well as what is called uh, security management and operational management, which I've been able to see he acquired in the United Kingdom. So that one tells you that uh, he is fit for the job. So oh, all right. I would uh, precisely affirm mm -hmm. uh, the president's choice. And as you can see, it seems that the president has a lot of confidence mm -hmm. in people from the National Intelligence Service. Right. Of course, citing examples uh, like uh, the director of public prosecutions mm -hmm. Nuldin Haji the ESCC uh, C, uh, CEO Mr. Tuali Mubarak mm -hmm. so that one gives you an idea that uh, the president mm -hmm. has a lot of faith in the national intelligence service All right. so I support All right. uh, don't you support well, briefly yes. uh, <laughs> To begin with, I think I'd want to first start by congratulating Hillary himself before I even talk about the former IG. Mm -hmm. I really think that Hillary brings a lot of uh, experience, expertise in the, I just said, um, position. But again, uh, I'm also taking of the opportunity to really wish well the outgoing uh, IG, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Boynet, also congratulating him for his current appointment. Mm -hmm. But I really think that um, uh, President Kenyatta, uh, the appointment of Hillary by the president ma could not have come at a better time. Right. We know that the nation uh, just uh, came over last uh, this January uh, mm -hmm. from the Dusich attacks, and actually, we really still the nation is still shaky in mm -hmm. terms of uh, mm -hmm. the uh, information with terror and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I really think that yeah, uh, the president are really taken away from. Okay. All right. Uh, so the objectives of the National Police Service, one of them is to strive for the highest uh, standards of professionalism among its members. Now, would you say for the last four years when we had uh, Joseph Boyne at uh, the outgoing, uh, would you say the police uh, forces have displayed the f professionalism in uh, them? Uh, I'd uh, say yes, but with a pinch of salt. Mm -hmm. Well, we have seen a lot of uh, uh, action from the police uh, to begin with the positives. We've seen the action even when we had uh, terrorism 
uh, activities in uh, 2013, uh, just this year, it's still fresh in our minds. Right. The police took an active stage. They uh, really did a good amount of work. Mm -hmm. But actually, I would also wish to caution my thoughts on the same. Uh, going by a lot of uh, complaints mm -hmm. on police brutality, harassment of the general public, and the runaway corruption, especially when it comes to traffic police, mm -hmm. I'd really think that if I was to rate, I'd say um, Mr. Boynet's work is at uh, 40%. Mm. Yeah. All right, uh, Ngojiri, uh, yes. what would you say about the office of the IG for the last four years in terms of professionalism and discipline among the members of the forces? To begin with, Hillary, let me start from where we began and uh, the establishment of the National Police Service. Mm -hmm. You remember that under the new constitution, the past, the, the past uh, IG was Mr. David Kimayu, mm -hmm. who later resigned. Mm -hmm. And uh, to answer your question, while we hail and acknowledge and appreciate mm -hmm. the efforts that have been made by the Inspector General of Police, former, mm -hmm. we cannot ignore the challenges that have been there in the police service. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Inspector General of Police has been able to trickle his authority uh, down and uh, uh, trying to compel discipline mm -hmm. among the police force. And uh, I hope now uh, it is going to change to a police service mm -hmm. at it, as it has always been dreamt. Right. But again, this is not to mean that the National Police Service has not had its own challenges. You right. have had cases of the police service being accused of uh, extrajudicial killings. That's you have right. had uh, cases of the police service being accused of corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, so we acknowledge mm -hmm. that yes, the IG mm -hmm. has been able to move the National Police Service from where it was uh, formerly when uh, uh, IG Kimayo resigned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Right. Uh, that uh, to move forward mm -hmm. and now with the incoming right. of Mr. Hillary Mutiabai, mm -hmm. he'll be able to take over. Mm -hmm. And as we said, mm -hmm. issues of community policing, mm -hmm. issues of border patrol, mm -hmm. issues of administrative right. functions, mm -hmm. and ETC, ETC. All right. Now, an another objective of the police, uh, National Police uh, Service, that is, is to prevent corruption and promote and practice transparency and accountability. Yes. We have had issues and stories of how police, especially the traffic and even the crime unit, uh, where you talk to Kidogo Amawende Station, and the other one is Utalalandani. These things have continued. Now, do you think the incoming IG will make sure there will not be such cases and if there is because things will not change overnight there there has to be some transition now uh don't do you think the incoming will be able to trim down this thing uh yes i i think i really want to take a key note when mm -hmm. uh, mr hillary presents himself before the parliament uh, approval committee All right. I'd, I'd really wish to listen to how he'd uh, want to tackle, especially the issue of discipline when it comes to corruption by the forces themselves. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a challenge. We have to admit that. True. It's going to be a very huge challenge for uh, Mr. Hillary to do this. But I also still believe that uh, if we can instill integrity mm -hmm. uh, in when once we do the recruitment, during the trainings, and I'm, I'm still very confident in uh, Mr. Hillary's ability, going by the work he has done as the deputy director of the counterterrorism unit, mm -hmm. going by the numerous trainings the guy has, mm -hmm. I really trust that he is able. His right. ability in dealing with the forces mm -hmm. cannot be much. Right. But again, we need to admit the fact that uh, when it comes to matters to do with uh, corruption, matters to do with self-integrity, mm -hmm. this trickled down to an individual and generally not uh, the forces as per se. Mm -hmm. So I really believe that we need to instill this discipline uh, starting from when we recruit the forces, we need to tell them what to do. And again, we need to speed up mm -hmm. uh, prosecution and civil administration of cases mm -hmm. that we have in court spending, especially when it comes to uh, administrative police.
All right, we will look at the police reforms, but before then, uh, Gonjuri, uh, another objective of the police, National Police Service is to train their staff to the highest possible standards of competence and integrity, and most of all, respect to human rights and fundamental freedoms. We have seen how our police behaved during the election, that is 2017, and even before then, we have seen how they behave with uh, the public during demonstrations and uh, we've, we're talking about the police brutality. Uh, we have had cases of murder, abduction and murder, which you actually mentioned uh, earlier as we began our in discussion tonight. And then we have had cases when they go to court, there we hear there was no evidence. So we are wondering what is happening to uh, our DCI unit. Well, why would they prosecute someone if they don't have enough evidence? So would you say the police or the office of the IG, the incoming IG will ensure the integrity and the competence that has been laid will be seen to the letter? Well, one of the efforts that has been made by the outgoing uh, IG, mm -hmm. Mr. J. Boynet, mm -hmm. is to restructure the training and uh, uh, educational, let me call it educational in this context, mm -hmm. the training architecture of the police. Mm -hmm. Remember he has tried to reform that and uh, as you alluded, competence is of importance even with the, with the rise of uh, uh, new laws mm -hmm. in the country. So the police must cease to be looked Act as a liability to Mwananchi. And that one comes, uh, brings to the fore mm -hmm. the issues of the police being trained to be uh, 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 pro friendly to the, to, the, to, the, to the general public. Mm -hmm. Gen uh, Mr. Mutiabai, the already uh, appointed IG, mm -hmm. has a lot of tasks to do. Right. In fact, as he takes over from uh, Boynet, one of the issues that I expect him to uh, make sure is implemented right. is the issue of community policing. A situation whereby a citizen will be comfortable to share information mm -hmm. with the police mm -hmm. and even the, 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 uh, the issue of uh, taking police to estates Right. It's also of great importance mm -hmm. because that is where now we start uh, uh, conversing yeah. between citizens and the police. So I believe mm -hmm. Mr. Hilary Mutiabai, having gotten a lot of training from Israel mm -hmm. and the United Kingdom mm -hmm. in operational and security management, mm -hmm. as well as and uh, terrorism uh, uh, education, mm -hmm. I believe that he will bring his knowledge and uh, he'll be able to coordinate mm -hmm. all this. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, j just to complement this, we don't really need to forget that there are the structural and organizational reforms that were announced by President Kenyatta just last year. Uh, true, true. So as Hillary gets into office, mm -hmm. he really needs to um, start by implementing the structural and organizational reforms. Right. We just saw the abolitions of the OCPD, the OCS uh, from the, the, the stations. Uh, we we had, I think, the, the AP is merged with, um, uh, the, the with, the, with the police system. So I really think that um, before we even uh, magnify the, 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 the task of the job that he has at hand, we need to start by looking at the structural reforms mm -hmm. even before we go deep into the integrity issues with the police. Right. With the poli I really think that the reforms that are coming in uh, are really coming in at the very right time, right. especially for the police force. Uh, when it comes to police brutality, do you think the IPOA and uh, the office of the IG for the last maybe four years, do you think they have been working in a good relation because we have seen police being protected and also the public as being said, you are on the wrong. Yeah, let's be honest, because this is an honest conversation. <coughs> well, we have seen efforts, uh, even from uh, IPOA, mm -hmm. to make independent investigations. Sometimes, and this is of human nature, we see people trying to protect mm -hmm. their own. I will not 
uh, underwrite the fact that the police service, the national police service, mm -hmm. has at times claimed that the police are never involved in uh, what they, they are accused deny. of. Yes, yeah. they deny and deny and deny. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we have seen efforts, yes. Right. But again, let us be honest. Mm -hmm. The IPOA mm -hmm. has, and, and you know the police has all the mechanisms mm. to either hide evidence or be open. Right. So IPOA has tried to do their job, but mm -hmm. we have had some cover-up in the police service mm -hmm. without even mentioning cases. So we must have an honest cons we have we must have an honest mm -hmm. conversation, and agree right. that uh, human beings mm -hmm. sometimes uh, tend to be dishonest, and True. this is uh, they are not justified <laughs> to do so, but they do it. But they do it. <laughs> All right, uh, let's uh, finalize with the police uh, reforms that uh, were mentioned towards the last. Uh, the last days of uh, last year and now uh, for the last four years the national police service has been on uh, trajectory reforms and has undergone tremendous changes aimed at improving service delivery to kenyans and one of them was equipping their police uh, unit with vehicles and equipment that they need to ensure they deal with the modern crimes mm -hmm. um, one the other thing was about them now they have the insurance uh, we, we had the housing allowances commuter allowances among others now these goodies that have been plot, uh, brought to the police unit or the service, do you think it wa it's one of the things that you make our police now be reformed and ensure? If, assuming, if they are getting 50,000 and you go with a, uh, with a package of 20 trying to corrupt them, they'll be honest enough and say no. You are in the wrong and I'm booking you. Do you think we will have a unit that will be so sure that uh, no corruption will take place because I have money, I'm being paid well by my government. Should I be corrupt? Uh, to begin with, I'll still go back to the original uh, statement I began this discussion with. I really think that when it comes to integrity, uh, corruption matters. These are uh, normally based on somebody's uh, psychology, what the, the, the level of um, uh, discipline within which uh, you want to treat as a human being. Uh, secondly, I'd wish to say that with the reforms that the, the both the structure and the organizational reforms that are coming up with uh, the police service uh, soon, if well implemented, they'll bring one thing, they'll boost uh, the morale of the officers. These guys undergo a lot of uh, issues out here, even before uh, we come back to what happens with them within the trainings. Yeah. They get a lot of uh, uh, issues and uh, normally every human being needs to be motivated sure. so i think that uh, when it comes to the welfare of the police uh it would be great that uh, their welfare is well taken care of all right yeah okay. so the reforms are good and i think uh, they'll, they'll at least add some value mm. in uh, some you, you respond to that because uh, it is said they'll be coming to stay with us in our estates uh, it's a proposal. How do you feel uh, living with a police officer next door? <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, I would be very comfortable because I know that uh, I'm secure mm -hmm. in my area of residence. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, let's tackle it from the perspective that they are going to be facilitated. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the estate, right. the kind of livelihood mm -hmm. that is there would not allow them to live to the standards of a human being, mm -hmm. uh, comparing their salaries to the demands mm -hmm. of uh, making a livelihood right. that is uh, indeed human. Mm -hmm. Are you saying they are paid uh, poorly? Yeah, yeah, oh, right now, yeah, oh, sure. Oh. Yeah, of course. Right now, they are, they are paid poorly. Yeah, 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 the police. And that has really brought the corruption we see on the road. Yeah, yeah. A and again, I would wish that uh, the incoming Inspector General of Police, mm -hmm. Mr. Hillary, mm -hmm. would start a conversation and uh, ignite a renewed effort to make sure that they begin with the SRC, mm. because this is where the problem mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. If a policeman is getting 
20,000, for example, or 30,000, mm -hmm. that is uh, just a constable, mm -hmm. let them be given house allowances right. that can be able... And you remember these people also have families. Mm -hmm. So I tend to imagine those ones that will come and live in towns, right. the kind of livelihood uh, that they are subjected to, mm -hmm. community policing will be of great importance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, would, mm -hmm. I would actually support it because that one will bring the issue of cohesion right. between Kenyans mm -hmm. and the police. And, the, and uh, this one now will bring the issue of citizens being comfortable right. to share any information mm -hmm. that is of threat to the national security. So I think that it is a good thing and the police ought to be motivated in a very nice way because they are, right. they, are the, they are the ones who protect us. True, true, yes. true. And they should. I would have loved us to continue the conversation, but unfortunately we are out of time. Many thanks for coming, gentlemen, Thank and you. sharing uh, your opinion. Coming up next is Wai Mashariki, and um, you want to stay tuned and know who will be uh, their host tonight. They have been my guest, Donna Naklet and Karioki Ngunjuri. I will be seeing you on f Sports of Friday, so keep it Y254. My name is Dereva Hillary. Have a good night. Thank you so much.